welcome, 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 welcome to Island Girl Garden. And up, uh, I'm your man. Uh, today, we're doing a video on making some compost tea. So, what we got right here, these are our composters. This is a composter right here. The ones that you can turn around and you see they got some compost in there and got some more on the other side in there. And some of it have been here since the summer. It's kind of it's kind of heavy, but you can roll it. You can grab your hand, hands in one of these holes and you can roll it. So you gotta roll it so often. Turn it, and turn it, you know you gotta turn it. So this is this the easy way of doing it with when you turn them. Like I got this for like twenty dollars from a guy who was didn't want it anymore. Then we seen another one on there, so we said, "All right, going to get that one too." And we usually fill that up in no time, so both of them are like a little over half of way full, you know, with your table straps and stuff and nice little compost bins. But what I want to tell you though, I took in this one. Don't have see this one having the holes in it. It does have holes right here on the side, which I didn't notice. And that one does too. I just noticed those holes. But what I did, I drilled some small holes in it, some more holes. And I, let's see, can I find some more? And I drilled some more holes like that, right there. And that's another one, that's another one. I did it all the way around. So when it rains, the rain goes inside of it. And then I put this I put this thing on it and it drips down. As you can see, we got a lot of compost tea without doing anything. Whenever it rains, this thing fills up. And compost tea up in there. So you get that compost tea right there. Put in there with your flowers, your plants, or whatever. I got some in here that I took out already. I got another bucket for it right there. So I've been watering my plants with this stuff here. Nice little compost tea. So whenever I go more than a couple of weeks without rain, I feed them that compost tea. And they seem to be loving it, to be honest. So I gotta find Another spot in my yard because I want to plant this satsuma right here. I'm going to put it in the ground too. Because I like a lot of my trees to be in the ground. Some people say it's too much trouble. You in Virginia, you can't grow that. I show them, hey, you can grow it. You can grow it if you want to grow it. And, you know, you got to take taste a little more. I mean, you go in the store and buy a bag of oranges because on my other set summer, I forgot to show y'all in my other video. This is my baby right here. He's been in the ground for three years now. And this is my set summer. Yeah, I showed y'all that. This is my set summer. He's been in the ground for three years. And last year, I got like 30 oranges off this tree. First year I had in the ground, I got uh, about three oranges off of it. This year, I had like 30 on it. And this is third year I've been in the ground. So I'm guessing it's at least about five years old because when I got it, it was like, it's like the one over there in the red pot. It was like the one over there in the red pot. It was like the one over there in the red pot. Like that one right there. It was the same size as this one when I got it. So I'm taking this right here. You see the graph right there. It's at least three years old. I mean, not three years old, but at least two or more. Don't put it up in the ground, too. Yeah, so if they tell you you can't grow it, if you want to try and grow it, you can try and grow it. I grow pineapple. They tell me I couldn't grow that. They tell me I couldn't grow oranges. They tell me I couldn't grow bananas. I grew a banana plant, but I haven't grown a banana yet, though. I'm working on it. I'm going to get one. I'm going to get one. Other than that, yeah, make you some compost tea to put in your garden. You can use banana peels, cut them up, put them in some water, use it on your plants. 
Got a lot of uh, potassium in it. Magnesium and all that kind of stuff. Then I got uh, I got a volunteer. I got a volunteer right here. Two volunteers came up. I planted those. Uh, I planted some garlic last year. And I thought I got all up. I guess I must have left a little bit in the ground. But I planted my garden, my garlic this year in this bed here. So we got one right there. It's coming up. Yeah, I had a couple more coming up. I put a little leaves in there, a little compost. One right there coming up. Got one right there coming up. As you can see, a little bit closer. That's one. That's one of that. So I got a couple of them coming up. I normally do my clippings, my grass clippings and stuff. Just throw it in there. Make a little uh. Just cover it up a little bit so they break down. Give a little nutrition to the soil. You gotta feed your soil. Just don't feed it fertilizer. You gotta feed it some plants too. This is my comfort right here. I'm gonna just starting to die back. I'm gonna I'm gonna take those and put them in some water. Or just throw them on the ground and make some comfort tea. We put the comfort. The comfort has that real deep, deep roots. Goes down the grounds and pull all the minerals and stuff about the ground from right from down deep. You can make a tea out of that too. And feed your plants. All you just chop it up and throw it on beside the plants on the ground. Let it break down. Even your orange peels. You can take your orange peels, put them on your plants, and sometimes it it deter some of the Bugs for going on your plant, because some of the bugs don't like the smell of the orange peel. There's a lot of things you can do to keep the stuff straight. But I gotta start spraying my my uh, peach trees. I need my peach trees right. Like I said, this is my man, Chico. This is my neighbor's dog. Yeah, pretty little good dog. Ain't that right, Chico? See, that's my man Chico right there. Chico's a good little dog. We don't have any more dogs. We used to have two. But that's my other dog right there. Oh, let's take a look at my fish, man. These, these are the only fish right here. I'm gonna take use on this pond water to feed my plants when I change my water. These are my fish, as you can see. Right there, all of them is bunched up in one little spot. I haven't fed them. I haven't fed them since two weeks before Thanksgiving. They go the whole winter without eating. So two weeks before Thanksgiving, I stopped feeding them. I don't feed them again until like March. Because they're going like a hibernation. They won't eat. Normally when they're hungry, they'll come flying out looking for some food but they seem to go on some kind of hibernation in the winter time and they don't eat they're still alive so that's why i said i decided to get those because you ain't gotta go a lot of worrying about them in the winter time plus they can take the cold weather when the whole pond can freeze over they still be alive but until next time like and subscribe leave a thumbs up Leave a thumbs up to help support the channel. And until next time, this is Island Girl Gardening and Up. I'm your man Up. Island Girl, she's in the house cooking right now. So happy holidays to everybody out there.